Belle Isle, Harrington, the West Coast, South Coast, East Coast, Belle Isle Bank, and the Funk Island Bank. Wind southwesterly 15 to 20 knots tonight and southwesterly 25 to 30 on Tuesday. Visibility good, except fair. A few showers. Oh, that's very lovely morning, too. That's usually to be thousands this morning. It's meant a ago yesterday. You think it'd be this morning or morning, I guess, sir. Uh, Time away. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, Dan, good luck. Just leave you on that Easter egg. We died down the dairy over there. We died up there. Have a look around. Oh, jeez, old man, you go off, huh? That's all. Yeah, what are you doing now, boys? How's everything going on? Thank you, that's right, Dan. No, I'm almost heading to the bottom of the new Dan. Put it along on that door, boy. No, I haven't seen a thing. Say, door. No, that's right, boy. No, I haven't seen a flick out of it. We're in the Mackerel Sound, uh, we generally get together uh, daylight in the morning and uh, take a look at the weather and uh, judge from there if it's going to be any good out or not. And uh, if it is, if it's looking alright for that day, well, we'll leave around daylight, depending on what time that might be, uh, early in the year or later in the season, it could be 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock or whatever. Well, the way we figure out where, where we're going, uh, most generally herb, is uh, we probably go from well, that in the day prior to that, uh, the day before that, where the macro was or where the macro was taken to or where they were seen to. And we generally go from that. If the macro, say, for instance, was down Smith Sound area or down to Bonavent area or Trent area the day before, well, that's where we hit for the next morning. When we're looking for macro, we most generally got to follow out on the bow there or up on the roof house or probably even up in the spire sometimes. So trying to see as far as you can and see if there's, see if there's any mackerel on the school and on the water. And uh, most generally that's how we, well matter of fact all the time, all the mackerel we do get, that's how we uh, get them, we see them on the water, playing up on the water and get them from there. Very seldom ever there's any mackerel got uh, around this part of the coast anyway, that's, uh, like you would a hearing or anything, get them from a sound or anything like that, although they have been got a few times but not too often you get them that way, you generally got to see them on the top of the water and uh, set from on the top of the water that way. Lots of days we don't get any herb or don't even see any. Especially this past season now, they acted a little different from last year because last year, if I recall, uh, there wasn't too many days that you go fishing, but you would see mackerel. But uh, there was a lot of days this year we went out and all the boats went out, matter of fact, and the mackerel wasn't showing on the water, we didn't see any, which uh, didn't look too bright at that time, but then we were seeing hopes that, uh, well, tomorrow or next day they would show up. First sign of mackerel, or looking for mackerel, uh, we look for a lot of things. We probably even sometimes look for, if there's no mackerel showing or no one to be seen, we even look around and see if we can see some gulls or something like that, something to, to give us some indication that there's mackerel in that, uh, that area. Uh, we are probably looking for other boats to see what's going on there, we we'll see if there's anyone saying, we've got a saying out there. We can generally tell if we see a boat if he's seeing any mackerel or not, because if he stopped or uh, if he's travelling now or whatnot, and that's where we get to some of our ideas to where the mackerel are. And then again, we probably get on the set and uh, call some of the boats and find out if there's any mackerel in that area, wherever they might be. fishery is a great is a great thing uh, in this area it's a big thing there's a lot of signs when the mackerel show up there's no question that we could buy up a purse up a hell of a lot of mackerel in this area if the mackerel is uh, like i've seen them down there one time a year if all the boats happen to be in that area that particular time that particular day i wouldn't say there's any any problem in buying up uh, all well anywhere from five to two to ten million pounds probably Well, there was a little settlement, uh, I think, uh, about 50 families there at one time. And uh, right now, certainly there's no one lives there anymore. They moved out, I think the last moved out about 10 years ago. Uh, there's a, a nice wharf in that place. Uh, they had a new wife built there just a couple of years before they moved out. 
This year I passed, uh, this past season, now I have uh, practically a new crew to me. Uh, the oldest one, the longest one I've been with me is uh, my son, Heli. He's been with me now ever since, well, he's been big enough to get above a boat ever since he's been probably 12 year old or something, and he's a little over 20 now. And uh, there's another guy with me, Alan Marsh from Clownville. Uh, he was with me last year, just his second year with me. Uh, two of my uh, other fellas, uh, Tom Spurrow from Badakov, does his first season with me, and uh, Sandy Lambert from Southport does his first season with me. Well, uh, they've done a nice bit of fishing, uh, apart from Halwyn, Marsh, this fellow from Clownville. Uh, he haven't done too much last year. Matter of fact, it was his first year, I think, uh, fishing. Uh, by the way, he's my son-in-law, and he went with me last year. Uh, he does a very good job out there, and like I already said, uh, Eli, well, he's he been with me ever since uh, he's been big enough to get above a boat, half an hour when he could. And uh, Sandy Lambert and Thomas Burr, well, they've been the same in business with another, on another boat for the past few years, and he had quite a bit of experience in the same business. Yeah, uh, it's only a matter of fact. Last year, I think that uh, we had the first mackerel boiled, like you would uh, cook uh, with the uh, salt meat and whatnot, like you would a fish feast sometimes. And we thought it was wonderful that way. That was the first time ever we did try it. I think uh, there's a, that's a fishery that could be carried a long way. It's a, it's a big potential there. We have the fish here, and we have the, the boats and equipment and the fishermen to catch it. But uh, our biggest drawback here is uh, getting rid of it. Yes, well, in Southport, uh, we have a little plant, uh, Southport Products. Uh, it's only a salt fish uh, plant. It uh, just puts up pickle products, uh, salt products, pickle, uh, what have you. There's no freezing capacity or anything there. And uh, they take quite a bit of mackerel there. I think uh, they can handle something like, uh, oh, from uh, 50, I think, in one particular day of the year, they took 70,000 pounds of mackerel, which is a lot of mackerel to cut by hand on a uh, pickle in a small place like, uh, like they have there. Uh, they get uh, all the mackerel they need, I think. Uh, most all the time, they keep pretty busy. Matter of fact, they can get more than he, he wants, I suppose, in a sense, more than they can handle. Because there's a lot of boats in the area and everybody is trying to sell mackerel when they're, when they're on the go. But the way they do it, they generally take, uh, say, a few from, say, 20,000 from me today and 20,000 from another fellow, and then the morning next day they take from the other guy and they try to spread it up uh, the best way they can, and try to satisfy uh, most of each of them the best they can. Showing right now, says. Yeah, a lot of fellas uh, had some mackerel there this morning. I think most of them got something there. They were sailing in tied onto the walls. They're trying to get rid of them. We leave. I think it's a job to get sail from, says. Over. You can't keep it too long, like I said in the beginning. There, we generally go fish in the early part of the day, or early in the morning, and if we're lucky enough to get fish, uh, we come in, and the first thing we do is get on the phone and phone what plants we know or some places that we might think uh, would be in a position to buy a macro from us. So we get on the phone and phone around to the plants and see if we can uh, get rid of it. I think anybody uh, got an idea of one field when it comes to uh, going fishing and then have to come in and dump it. Uh, it's a very hard thing to have to do, I tell you. It's, it's very sick and it's, uh, it makes a fellow think a lot, you know, but uh, then again, what, what other choice have you got, you know? 
that it's a it's not a good experience I tell you they have to go out and catch fish and come in and keep it the board all night and plus up all night you're up all night uh, on the phone phone around all over the, the coast to all the plants trying to get through to them and whatnot I've been coming I've come in in the day earlier part of the day like two o'clock in the day I'm on the phone say till 12 o'clock in the night probably making 15 20 phone calls long distance calls and he ended up uh, selling no mackerel going aboard the next morning and dumping them so it's not a very good experience to tell you for any fishermen they have to go through. Well, I don't think I have to explain to anyone how I feel about it. As such, I don't feel very good. The position we're placed in today, you know, with uh, so much fish on the go, so much mackerel on the go, and I'm not able to sell it this day and ages. Something beyond me. Well, uh, Herb, uh, to the job to, to the job to control it, even your own business, your, your fishing business, because you get up in the morning, you know the fish is out there, you got an idea the fish is out there, and. Uh, if you don't get them then, well damn but we're not going to get them in January, February or something like that. We're not going to catch them then for sure, so if we don't catch them when they're going, no other choice but to go out and uh, try to catch some fish. Hoping that, like I said, I uh, already stated there, that uh, hoping that somebody would be good enough or somebody would see the way clear to buy it from us. But that particular time, that was uh, uh, early in the season. It's probably around the middle of September we're speaking about, something like that. That happens in the past, that have happened now in the past two or three years. Uh, the mackerel shows up fairly early in Trinity Bay, uh, something like uh, the latter part of August or first part of September. And everybody is geared up for the mackerel, a lot of boats geared up for the mackerel around here. It's a big uh, kitchen capacity, uh, like, I don't know how many boats there would be in Sains and that, but there's a, it is a real big outfit in Trinity Bay for mackerel. So when everybody got fishing, no doubt, uh, and the mackerel is a bit easy to get, there's a lot of mackerel in any given day. So uh, at that particular time there was no boats in. We never had no uh, uh, Bulgarian ships or any foreign ships buying mackerel in the area. It was a bit early in the season. And the plants, as I already stated there, they wasn't uh, taking any with a, just a very small lot, that's all. Uh, probably a couple of tree boats was able to keep all the plants in this part of the coast going at that, at that time of the season. So if there's nothing else for you to do, if you catch mackerel, you'll catch them, you'll go and catch them with the open that something will happen that you would get rid of them, somebody would buy them from you and when you get in some of the plants will be good enough or see the way clear for the buy the mackerel from you but when all ends come in with mackerel there's nobody buying them so there's nothing else left to do with anyone you dump them because they only stand just a few hours, that's all at that time of the year, there's, there's only good for a bird a day, if you catch them in the morning well that night they've got to be either processed or dumped because the weather is warm, the water is warm and the fish is warm and uh, it don't stand up to it very much now at that time. Eric, how much mackerel do you figure you've dumped this morning? Oh, roughly 35,000. And about four, on the four or 500,000 dumped there in those last two days. You say those figures, you know, almost half a million pounds of mackerel. You're pretty calm when you say that, but you, you mustn't feel very good about it. No, not, it's not too encouraging. Not for we fellas, not the farm. No, we don't, uh, don't see any chance at all of getting rid of the mackerel, but unless you bring in some of those boats, you know. You know, the fishermen, if the fish is here for the catch and the fishermen can catch it, you know, I think it's up to the government, and the Minister of Fisheries and all of it is for to look after and see that we can get rid of it. So, you know, it's not looking that bright at all. I guess the Union uh, was behind the most of that with the regards to the boats coming in, the, those uh, Bulgarian boats, foreign boats coming in, they got that thing going there last year, I think in uh, 78, I think was the first year they, they got that uh, going. They got some boats in there, uh, I think they had seven in there last year if I recall right. And I think that was one of the best things that ever happened to the fishermen in, in Trinity Bay, especially we fellows have seen the same business. This year I think we had five uh, ships there, Herb, and last year I think there was seven at the peak of uh, Bulgarian ships. And uh, I think uh, when everything is going well in the macro fishery around here, that we can keep anywhere from five to seven boats 
very busy. We did last year anyway, we kept seven boats going there for a while. About the uh, uh, 1st or 2nd of October, I think the mackerel was bad up here. The Union sent in a helicopter there and flew over the bar signs. I believe they counted, I'm not sure, it was 42 bar signs they counted at one time, one particular day. Uh, I'd say it was about 5 million pounds of mackerel bad up there then. So well, this particular morning, uh, we was in Smith Sound, and there was a lot of mackerel showing. Most all the boats was around there, and a lot of fellas putting new signs buying them. We got ready for to uh, try to purse up some of them. That was big spots at the time, and uh, like I already said, I thought uh, I took uh, another thought and said, well, we'd be better off if we could buy some mackerel because we probably buy one of these spots would be good for a month, you know, or the rest of fall almost. So we changed our minds from purse sign, and then we went to see if we could get us back to buy. So we was uh, in Smith Sound. We was there about two miles below we Lance Cove at this particular time and we saw this big spot of mackerel. So the mackerel was going down the shore uh, fairly fast, so we knew we had to get ahead of them probably a mile if in order to give us time to get ready and land the end of the sand, get the end of the sand on shore and get it fastened to the shore and that. And uh, also get it so much to sand, probably about 30 or 50 fathoms to sand already out before the mackerel even got down to where we were. So, uh, because if the mackerel is too close to here when you start to set, there's no way you're going to stop them. Always got to be so far ahead, then we get give you time to get probably put in there after you're saying out in order to stop the mackerel, be ready for when you get to light. Uh, just after we had the saying put out, uh, some of the crew passed through Mark, uh, there's a lot of mackerel there, and I said yes, just I think it was at least a million pounds of mackerel there, according to bars that I've seen before. I've had some very good bars before, and I've seen other fellas have made good bars, but uh, I know it was the most mackerel I've ever seen barred, so I said right there, and it's uh, at least a million pounds there. A lot of fellas that, uh, you know, don't care about buying mackerel, we think twice about buying mackerel. Although there's a plenty of fun, sometimes very easy to buy up, but uh, we have to think twice sometimes because we wonder what's going to happen. Well, you know, if you're going to buy them or you're going to get rid of them, so you have to think twice. And a lot, of, you know, that's a big drawback on, on a lot of fishermen. You know, there's times they could have bought up a lot of mackerel, but then again, what's the point in buying them up if they think they might get rid of them? So, uh, it could be a, a lot of mackerel bought up. Uh, no question about that. When we go when we go for the bar saying we use the same equipment, I use the same saying. The one I used the year for a barn there was uh, two hundred fathoms long, it's thirty five fathoms deep. It's a big saying to put out in shore water, all right, but uh, then again you got a better chance with a big spot of mackerel than you have using a smaller saying. Because you use a small saying with one of these big spots of mackerel there. Nine times out of ten that you're gonna lose them. Because uh, you haven't got too much slack point there, you're sitting the saying barely is dipped, which a big saying is little heavier, and you've got a lot more slack twine there, so you got a better chance of uh, saving the mackerel. Barred mackerel seem to, after you get them barred for sometimes a week uh, or a little more, they seem to get chiefed up, uh, scrubbed up, the skin get uh, chiefed off and for some reason or another, and they don't look too good. But uh, in this particular case, uh, we never did see mackerel by as long as that into good uh, uh, condition as what they were. They were real good, even the, the fifth week, last mackerel we took out, they was in perfect condition. As a matter of fact, it was the best ever I've seen for that time and, you know, the length of time they was buried and whatnot. For what reason, I don't know, and I don't think there's hardly any fishermen know. Some people say it's a, it's a big space of water, and uh, but I don't know for sure, because even if you've got a big space of mackerel, a big space of water, and then a lot of mackerel into it, it's still the same thing almost. But it was in real good condition, the mackerel was for the, for the amount of mackerel was there and the length of time that we had them buried up, real good. The 
there's lots of mackerel around, but uh, we're not in a position, or I'm not as a fisherman, I'm not in a position to uh, think that we're fishing that mackerel too wide because we're only fishing in a sh very short season. We're taking a lot of mackerel, but uh, the mackerel is taken in a short season. It seemed like a lot, but if that was spread over, say, a spring and fall fish or a winter fishery or something over a period of time, it wouldn't seem half as much. But just because we're landing, say, uh, oh, uh, say, five million pounds in Trinity Bay, you know, but it's only a month, so you're talking a lot of fish in a short period of time. It seems like you'll have a lot of fish, but it's Jesus, no doubt. Well, that's the biggest one that ever I did see, but I think that's, that is the biggest uh, bar of mackerel that ever I know to be barred around here anyway. Matter of fact, uh, I said just now, we figured there would be a million pounds there, but when we when we got it all cleaned up, I think there's something like 1,600,000 pounds we got from that. down there, there was a boat right in the area, and we was keeping her pretty busy there, mostly ourselves, there was another, another boat that was selling some to her. The way we was uh, situated there, there was two of us involved, myself and uh, Gordon Lambert, that was two boats buddied up, and he had a 45 footer, mine's a 56 footer. Uh, his boat takes about uh, 50,000 pounds with the weather good, and uh, mine can take around 100,000 pounds. That's providing the weather is good. Like I said, we have to take probably a little on deck. So that's 150,000 pounds. So that can keep most any of these uh, Bulgarian ships uh, happy for one day. Southport Herb has, a, has a, a very good history of mackerel. As a matter of fact, I suppose there's more mackerel fishery done in, uh, in Trinity Bay and any other part of the coast. We were taking mackerel at the Seine uh, close to five weeks Herb. Uh, the first week we didn't do good, too good there. We, we lose two or three days the first week because it was a bit stormy. The wind was acting on that shore, and which put us behind quite a bit. But, uh, we were supposed to five weeks, I think, uh, clean it up there. We've developed uh, ways and means, and uh, we got the gear, the boats, and the equipment, and we got to know how now, I think, to, uh, to fish mackerel and, uh, and catch mackerel. But uh, the only drawback is now is getting rid of mackerel. That's one of the biggest drawbacks now. So if uh, I think somebody else should be looking at something, uh, markets, uh, some ways of uh, buying up the mackerel and I suppose there's some way they could hold off some over and process them later at a later date or something. I don't know what could be done, but, you know, but there's people, uh, I imagine some of the authorities, uh, 
the Department of the Fisheries both departments should get together and find some ways, and the union too, find some ways of overcoming some of that. I think there's a there's a big job there for someone. I think it's about time to someone get to work now. Well, the way she's going now, it's not too bad, eh? but then again, uh, I suppose anything can happen when we're dealing with, uh, when we're depend we're more or less dependent now on foreign countries, foreign boats, and uh, that kind of a thing for the process on macro. So anything could happen down the road. Just hope it don't, but uh, anything could happen. Uh, if the day comes that uh, we can't get them boats in for some reason or another, then Bulgarian boats are foreign boats. For the bar on macro, that's going to be a bad day. But the local plants, as far as I'm concerned, they've they got some big changes to make uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, if they're going to buy macro, they got big changes to make. They either got to uh, expand, get bigger, otherwise they got to do with some of the other fish that is already processing for the order to take macro.